G'day mates, it's the Doctor here, and today we are going to discuss which characters are long overdue to make a comeback in Thomas the Tank Engine and Friends. With over 225 characters in the TV series, not even counting the characters in the Railway series or the magazine stories or... Bouncy Castle Engines? There are bound to be characters that have been left behind by the studio, so rather than introducing more characters that will more than likely be forgotten about like many others, why not bring back more of the old and treat them as the new? It's amazing to think that kids today may have no idea who these characters are that I'm about to list because the show is 36 years old and we're going to go over who these relics of the past are and why they should return. Starting this list off are two characters that have never been featured in an official episode, only through promotional material, and they are Sam and Logan. The reason I'm putting these characters together is because they both received the same treatment, as some fans may recall they were introduced through the official Thomas and Friends YouTube channel back in 2015. And then later on, they released a video to show us Sam and Logan leaving Sodor. So the obvious question comes to mind, why? Why introduce these two characters not only fully animated, but also having voice actors as well as interacting with Thomas the main character? To this day, it's still unclear as to what happened to Sam and Logan behind the scenes, so the fact they never had a story to themselves is why I say they should return to the show, or in this case have a proper introduction. But at the same time, the fact we never got to know them is why I'm placing them at the bottom of the list. Maybe you might disagree, and argue that is exactly why they should be at number one, but in my humble opinion, I can think of other characters that have much more going for them. Number 9. Neville. Neville is one of the most smartly looking engines in my eyes. A steam engine that is rectangular like a diesel, a nice black paint job, and looks fairly tall, something I can relate to. And hey! I think the episode he was introduced in was a good story about misinformation, spreading false rumors, which makes it scary for how damaging false information can be in today's world. But unfortunately, we never saw a continuation of Neville's character traits. But with that said, if you are wanting to see more of Neville, I highly recommend Sterling Product 01, formerly known as Mallard Fan 62's Sodor Tales, as he did a great job expanding Neville's character. So hey, uh, writers of Mattel, why don't you take inspiration from this guy? Since you really like showing animals in a show about trains, why not have a character who's afraid of animals? I'm sure there are kids who are afraid of mice, bats, rats, snakes, sharks, dogs. Especially ones that look like they came out of a movie Food Fight. Number 8. Molly. I remember reading on Thomas Wikia that Molly's class is meant to be a really strong locomotive, but as we saw in Molly's truck, she was very timid. Therefore, I had the idea of having an engine who is afraid of breaking coaches. Now that's something I don't believe we have seen yet. A character who is afraid of their own strength could lead to some interesting story ideas. And while I have criticized dream sequences in the past, I think this would be a valid reason to show one, giving us more action without causing actual destruction. But somehow, I still think in a crazy, topsy-turvy dream sequence, Hit Entertainment will still think, ah, oh, that's too violent for a kid's show. To that, I ask them, why do many fans consider Season 5 to be the best, not one of, the best season in the entire show? I place Molly above Neville because I've seen good fan stories of Neville, however I haven't seen any of Molly. Not saying nobody has made them, I just haven't found any myself. And it may seem like an unusual reason, as you're probably thinking, family stories aren't canon with a show, but to that I ask you blokes, do you want to count episodes like Edward Strikes Out, Scar Lloyd the Brave, Jumping Joby Wood, and Wonky Whistle canon? I rest my case. Number 7. Mighty Mac. One of the more fascinatingly designed characters on this list, Mighty Mac was introduced in Season 9 and much like many other characters introduced in the Hit era, Mighty Mac would never be featured in another story. Yeah, sure he still made some cameos, but really, how can you not have more stories about two characters occupying the same body? 
Watching these two squabbling over each other is funny as heck because they can't bump into each other and if one gets damaged in front, the other gets damaged from behind. Whether they are arguing over directions or something trivial, no one can argue these guys could have been one of, or two of, the funniest characters in the series. Also, we barely see any episodes of a narrow gauge railway, so a character like Mighty Mac could give them all more screen time, while also introducing more story ideas to the table. Whether it's for the action or the comedy, I guarantee Mighty Mac can deliver on both. Number 6. Merlin I know this character last appeared in Season 22, which wasn't that long ago, but if you're going to bring a character to the island of Sodor, with whom many say was the best character in Journey Beyond Sodor, how can you not include him in more episodes? It's almost like they tried setting up another character, but never continued on from the initial setup. That's kind of a running theme with this list. A simple story idea for Merlin is like Toby in Heart of Gold, to see Merlin catching thieves, or to outsmart Diesel in another scheme of his. What's there to not like about Merlin? He's enjoyable, he's bubbly, he's random at times. There's just so much more the writers can do for a character like this who pretends to be invisible, and to see more wasted opportunities like this is nothing short of displeasing the fans. Number 5. Scruffy He's the leader of the trucks. What more is there to say? Are we meant to believe he's still buried in that collapsed mine? Mattel could easily bring him back. It wouldn't be the strangest reintroduction to a character. Number 4. Arthur I'm not gonna lie, I did like Away From The Sea how the episode explains what sandboxes are and how they help the engines breaking on slippery rails, but aside from that, Porter is one of the most useless characters in the entire show. I'm not saying that out of spite, I'm saying that he is so bland any episode that features him could have been replaced with Arthur. In a measly two episodes, we get to know much more about Arthur than there is about Porter. Both of them like the sea, they prefer to stay reliable instead of mischievous, but Arthur held a spotless record, an engine that went on for so long without causing an accident. He also owns his own branch line around a fishing village, and I must ask, is it still there? Or has that entire area disappeared like Misty Island? And let's not overlook the fact, Arthur is one of the few red engines in the series. Now, who else is red and takes great pride in their paint job? James, of course. So for those reasons, we can have James starting another rivalry, but this time, he has a record to beat. It would be interesting to know how long Arthur managed to go without causing an accident, and we'll see if James can beat it. In summary, I believe Arthur should return to replace Porter, show us a rivalry with James, and to solve the mystery of the missing village. That's a good title for an episode. The Missing Village, ooh. Taking home the bronze medallion is a somewhat bronze engine himself, and that is Stepney. Stepney had one of the best story arcs throughout the show. An engine who was saved from scrap in one of the most atmospheric episodes to date, then travels to Sodor where it's a welcome party and has one last good run on his last day. What I really like about Stepney is his passion to do a good job. You can see how enthusiastic he is whenever he is given a task and just so happy whenever he comes to Sodor. Since Season 5 when he last appeared, or Season 12 if we're going to count that cameo, a lot has changed on Sodor, most notably the Earl's Castle, the new members of the Steam Team, Blue Mountain Quarry, Sodor Search and Rescue Center, and oh yeah, the overwhelmingly ludicrous number of other locomotives introduced. It's a similar idea for at least several episodes of an engine returning to Sodor to see how the railways have changed. Maybe an episode taking a look at how Stepney is doing on the Bluebell Railway. Maybe Thomas can pay a visit to Stepney's line. The only concern if Stepney was to return is if his new voice becomes... aggravating. It's hard to have a character that is in this constant awe and excitement without sounding... slightly obnoxious. What do you guys think would make a good voice for Stepney? 
post in the comments. Coming closer to the end is the one, the only, Diesel 10. Easily one of the best villains in the entire franchise, despite not originating from the source material. Really think about that for a moment. Diesel 10 has been viewed by many as a terrifying but goofy character with a menacing design that made us petrified of him as kids, but love him as adults. Diesel 10 was last seen in the missing Christmas decorations back in 2013, and has likely been abandoned by the executives, not necessarily forgotten as I have a suspicion he has been excluded for being too scary for younger audiences. That said, however, it's not like kids remain at a young age for 36 years, so why not allow the show to mature a little with the audience, and allow more intensity with Diesel 10 wreaking havoc across Sodor? It would certainly be a better plan than the one in Day of the Diesels. Some of you might remember a point I made in my top 10 worst Brenner era episodes that kids want to be intimidated, they want to be challenged, they want something to leave an impact on them. Kid shows are allowed to have action in them. Look at the Powerpuff Girls, Samurai Jack, or Jimmy Neutron. It doesn't mean characters need to be ki- 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 Insert buzzword here that YouTube doesn't like. While we have gotten more action-packed episodes in recent seasons, it may be a step in the right direction, but there's no need to stop walking after a single step. Take a few more. Allow the action to be the ultimate highlight of the show again, like it was with the model era. And when kids grow up, believing a show about talking trains can't get any more violent, they find out Share 17 is a thing. See? Thomas and Friends can be aimed for adults. And now it is time for the number one character to return to the show that is none other than... Boko. Boko was one of the most interesting characters to me. A name unlike any other, a very slick design, and probably one of the most calming characters there was. Much like Arthur, I never understood why Boko disappeared from the series. Marion is fine as a character, in fact she's one of my favourite CGI characters. Timothy, eh, he's not as bland as Porter, but why did Boko have to be removed from the quarry? Why isn't he at the clay pits? Why doesn't he appear at the harbour anymore? In a way, Boko is like a mentor to Bill and Ben, someone trying to watch over them, but not quite the same as a parrot, but someone who knows them all too well, but can handle the trouble the twins are notorious for. Another thing that Boko has going for him is his size. As long as his CGI render isn't as puny as Oliver's, I would like to see the small railway engines or the narrow gauge engines to see Boko coming through just going on and on like a Basilosaurus or a Star Destroyer. As far as story potential, you can have one of these guys talking to Boko about his size, that he must be really special, and they feel down for not being as grand looking as him. Better yet, you can have a character like Scar Lowy explaining to Boko how Duncan, or Mighty Mac if they ever bring him back, that he is fed up with them, but Boko explains how he has to put up with Bill and Ben's troublesome nature. Bringing Boko back to the series has become quite crucial as of season 24 because if you haven't seen Kenshi on the rails, I'm going to spoil this episode, but... Hero has left the island of Sodor. What does this mean? It means we have one less freight train on the island. And it is established, Boko can haul really long trains, so if Season 25 was to be announced in the near future, now is a perfect opportunity to bring Boko back instead of another brand new character that no one will recognize and can be easily disposed of. And that is going to be the end of the video. I hope you really like this, and I have plenty of other ideas to discuss for Thomas and Friends, shall we say, more ambitious topics to tackle. However, I said it before, I am really busy, so I don't know when I'll find the time to make my next discussion video, so please subscribe if you want more, ring the bell so you know when I'll make a return, and until then, take care, mates.